receiver coaches. Is that something, can you kind of pinpoint to <laughs> when that, that idea occurred to you? You know, the, the, uh, the, when it first occurred was, and, and part of it is because I had, uh, you know, year before I had two new coaches, two uh, relatively new coaches, and um, I didn't feel like our inside receivers and outside receivers um, were very well synchronized. You know, I think they're all well, they're well coached. I think they played hard, but as far as, you know, the outside guy understanding what the inside guy does, the inside guy understanding what the outside guy, I didn't think that was really uh, well synchronized. And so I wanted to improve that. So we met together during the spring. And then the other thing is, is I think both are kind of quality, knowledgeable coaches. And so, you know, then, uh, uh, so you got Nick, who's coached the outside now, coaching the inside, but, you know, knows and can reflect on, you know, okay, so the outside guy's doing this, and so you're doing that type of thing, vice versa with, uh, with uh, Sage. And then the other thing is I, I think they're quality coaches from the standpoint you know, this room learns, learn from this, uh, from uh, say Sage. Now this group gets to draw from him as well, and, and then of course, so does the same with Nickel. You know, um, you know, originally when I when I first got in, you know, there weren't as many receivers, so you'd have, you know, one guy would run the room of receivers, and there'd be a guy tagging along with one or two tight ends, you know, between you know, half a dozen drills as he's transitioning back and forth. In our case, we'd put him with the inside receivers, but we got more receivers, so we want to have more sets of eyes and, and kind of split them evenly. But, but with that said, what one does complements the other, and I'm trying to, you know, uh, elevate that, really. How would you compare their, their coaching styles, the two of them? Uh, kind of a pleasant contrast to that, really, you know. Um, uh, you know, Sage is very vocal, um, and then uh, and Nichols kind of a quietly intense guy. You know, uh, both real smart, both very technical. You know, and both good teachers. A little bit easier to evaluate the team and shoulder pads on today than it is without any pads. Yeah, without seeing the film, but that definitely is because then guys can finish stuff, and you say, well, maybe could have got there, maybe couldn't have, maybe this block would be finished, maybe it wouldn't be. So you get a, bit, a little clearer picture of that. Uh, how, how did you feel your, your team did in uh, 11 on 11 today? Uh, well, I thought we were inconsistent. I mean, uh, so I, I thought offensively we smoked them going this way. Defensively, I think they got after us going that way. And then I think that um, in both cases, um, we put too many negative plays together. You know, it's one you're going to have a negative play from time to time, but you know there should be a little bit of space between negative plays, and so they're kind of in clusters. And so I think uh, both sides got frustrated and, and can't and can't afford to be frustrated for the length of time that they were. You know, not in, uh, you know not in streaks. You feel like guys are kind of putting too much thought on a, a blown play or. Or a great play. I know you said yeah, just kind of move on to the next play. Well, yeah, we definitely have to do that. Yeah, they got they need to just focus on the next play and not dwell on the last one, no matter what happened. What's your favorite part about being down here in Houston? Yeah, the fact that the team's all together and it's uh, it has kind of a team bonding quality because we can mix the team as far as roommates and that type of thing. And you know, and then it's 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 kind of just us. I mean, if you're bored, you got to talk to somebody on the team. You know, it's not like you're trolling around roommates or you know somewhere else or downtown or any of that you know so it's i think it's been really good a lot of the guys talk about getting into the game room ping pong pinball video games coach Leach, you, you make your way in there at all and, and i i don't i'm usually actually finishing off film and working on film and stuff uh and uh, not that i'm opposed to it but there's also kind of a line in the crowd at some of those tables too you know did you like the way that, that make or miss it, uh, drill ended there with, with Marcellus and, and Tay? Brought, brought some good energy, oh, yeah. it seemed like. Yeah, no question. And I think uh, Tay's kind of done a lot of really good things early. And, of course, uh, Marcellus is, uh, you know, kind of has some leadership qualities and has always been a guy that brought quite a bit of energy and just a fun guy to watch, you know. What was your, what was your verdict? Who do you think won the, won the battle there? <laughs> uh, the probably, maybe. well... Uh, you know, it's a it's it's a tougher job to get in in the isolated space. I'd have to say I'd have to say Pippins did. The first one, uh, uh, Tate might have scored before the ball was stripped. 
So, I mean, it might actually be one-to-one -one if we go back and look at it. I don't know, but, you know, good intensity and both of them doing a good job. Tavares has spoken highly of, of Tate. Um, and they're, they're both from the South. They kind of have a, a, a bit of a brotherhood. Um, what, do you, could you see Tate really uh, climbing uh, up the depth chart this year? Well, he's doing a lot of good things now. We'll just have to see. You know, it's, it's only been a few days, but he's playing real hard and real intense. And, you know, he's not one of those guys that's afraid to go out there and show what he can do. Mike, what about Jameer Calvin? I mean, it looks like he's got some moves and he's pretty athletic. Very quick, very good stop and start. Uh, stop suddenly and start suddenly. Uh, very elusive. Uh, the other thing, uh, you know, pretty knowledgeable and, and kind of a real hungry to be coached kind of guy. Were you surprised by how comfortable he is with the offense at this point? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I was. I mean, uh, came out. I, I would have to say he came out uh, a little more knowledgeable and a little more ready to play than I expected. I thought he'd be good. But his recruitment process I mean when I know he was kind of flip-flopping uh, when you see that as a head coach does that make you kind of go in harder as like a shark trying to trying to sw swim I don't know I just try to keep him try to get him you know and uh, but you know we're we're the best place as far as him catching the ball and that's what's most important to him so. do, you, do you see him on the inside uh, probably although I do think he could play outside but he's on, on the inside right now. He's on the inside think, right what now. What do you think he brings to the, to the mix that has led you guys to put him on the inside? Yeah, he's just real quick, real elusive, awfully tough to match up with. The guy's fast as him. It's hard to, for them to put a corner inside, and they're not inclined to. And then, <clears throat> you know, he's so he's quicker than a safety or a nickel guy. And then, um, and then you, you like a really good change of direction guys inside, although I do think he could play outside. Good.